On August 23, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived in Kiev. This visit is already significant as it is the first time since Ukraine's independence. Modi is expected to discuss economic ties and cooperation in defense, science, and technology, while also broaching the contentious subject of a settlement to end the war with Russia. Recent meetings between Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi have been aligned with significant dates or events for Ukraine. On June 14, they met in Italy, just before the peace summit, although India was ultimately represented at a lower level by Pavan Kapoor, the secretary of the Ministry of External Affairs of the Republic of India. This time, the visit takes place ahead of Ukraine's Independence Day. Modi's trip to Kiev is notable because no Indian leaders have visited Ukraine since it gained independence. However, this visit should be viewed through the lens of Indian policy, which has a different agenda and worldview compared to what is familiar in Ukraine. In the past, Ukrainian diplomacy made several mistakes regarding India. For example, the 1996 contract for supplying 320 Ukrainian tanks to Pakistan, a country with which India has fought four wars since its independence, is one such mistake. Additionally, South Asia has not been a priority for Ukraine, despite several potential areas of cooperation. For Modi, Ukraine is a natural partner. However, the relationship between Ukraine and India over the past decade has been so strained that it will take time to resolve, says diplomat Roman Besmertny. Moreover, Pro-Russian sentiments remain strong in India, dating back to Soviet times. Another important factor is India's reliance on Russian arms supplies. According to CIPRI, Russia supplied 65% of all weapons purchased by India over the past two decades, including aircraft, helicopters, submarines, and warships. In Sudza, located in the Kursk region, the majority of residents have evacuated following the arrival of Ukrainian armed forces with only those who could not or chose not to leave remaining behind. How these residents live, their views on the Ukrainian military and their understanding of Ukraine's presence were reported by journalists from Ukrainian Pravda. According to the report, Sudza differs significantly from the devastated border towns in the Sumy, Kharkiv, Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia and Kherson regions which have been razed by Russian forces. Despite sustaining some damage to key buildings like a local hospital, a cultural center and administrative offices, the city remains mostly unscathed. Residents predominantly travel by bicycle and face shortages of power, communications and food supplies. Many domestic animals wander the streets in search of food abandoned by their fleeing owners. Local villagers in the Kursk region describe their areas as reminiscent of Ukrainian villages, well-maintained homes and clear signs of agricultural activity. There has been no conflict between locals and Ukrainian soldiers, with some residents revealing their Ukrainian ancestry. One local shared his story. The Ukrainian soldiers are regular visitors. They're well-mannered, like you. My children left, but I didn't because my mother is paralyzed. I understand Ukrainian, as my grandparents were from Poltava. We have to watch Ukrainian TV. There were once celebrations on the border where regions partnered. We'd visit Sumy. People from Sumy would come here, get married and have children. Ukrainian medics operating in Sudza acknowledge their discomfort, noting their presence on foreign soil under international law. However, they report few injuries among Ukrainian soldiers. As Ukrainian forces have observed, the city's destruction is escalating due to Russian mortar and drone strikes. Consequently, many locals are now sheltering in basements. One Ukrainian soldier highlighted the locals' shock 
upon seeing images of Ukrainian cities destroyed by Russian forces, finding it hard to believe their own military could commit such destruction. He noted that many locals express a desire to live out their days in peace, indifferent to the war, and often greet Ukrainian soldiers in Ukrainian. Many residents have family in Sumy and have ceased prior looting activities, now cooperating with Ukrainian troops for essential supplies. Colonel Roman Kostenko of the Ukrainian Security Service recently remarked that the local population did not resort to Molotov cocktails when approached by Ukrainian forces.